Hey everyone, here's the last lesson video of chapter 2. This is section 2.8. We're going to learn about two variable inequalities, and our objective is that we can graph two variable inequalities. So before we get to two variable inequalities, let's talk about one variable inequalities. Let's review this from chapter 1. So I just made two very basic examples, and I'm going to jog your memory on how to graph these. So x is greater than or equal to 2. That would be a closed circle on the 2 and shaded to the right. And that's because the greater than symbol is there and the less than or equal to means we are including that endpoint. And another example would be x is less than negative 1. So that would be an open circle on the negative 1 and shading to the left. Open circle because you are not including that endpoint and we're shading to the left because that's the direction of the less than symbol. Now that we know what a linear inequality is, let's talk about the process of how to graph one. And by the way, this process was introduced in Algebra 1, so we're going to be reviewing it now. First thing you want to do is make sure your inequality is in slope-intercept form. So that means you have it in the form y equals mx plus b, but instead of having an equal sign, you're going to have an inequality symbol. Make sure your y is on the left side of the inequality. That will make the process easier. Next, you want to plot the y-intercept, a.k.a. the b, and then use the slope to plot another point. Then you want to figure out, should you have a dashed or a solid line? You will have a dashed line if you have the symbol greater than or less than. And the reason is, is because the points on the line are not solutions, so we're not going to include them. If you have a symbol greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, that means we are including the points on the boundary line. So those are solutions, and therefore we need to include them with a solid line. Now let's talk about where to shade. If you have the symbol greater than or greater than or equal to, that means the solutions are greater than the inequality. So we're going to shade above. If you have the symbol less than or less than or equal to, your solutions are smaller than or less than the inequality, so we're going to shade below. Now I'd like to share with you a checking process that you can use to make sure you shade it in the right region. So you want to check your shading by picking a test point that is not on the boundary. And the easiest test point to plug in for an inequality is the origin, 0, 0. So what you want to do is plug in the test point for your inequality and do the operations. If this test point makes a true statement, such as 2 is greater than 1, the test point is in the shaded region. If the test point creates a false statement, such as 1 is greater than 2, the test point will not be in the shaded region and will be in the non-shaded region. Example 1 gives us the opportunity to practice this knowledge. So in part A, we have the inequality y is greater than 3x minus 1. This is already in slope-intercept form, so we can easily identify what the slope and the y-intercept are, and I label them. m is 3 and b is negative 1. So following the process I talked about earlier, you're going to plot the y-intercept first, which is negative 1, and then use the slope of 3 over 1 to go up 3 and over 1. So we have another point. Now, the greater than symbol, there is no line underneath. So that means we're going to have a dashed boundary line. And we're going to be shading above because it is greater than. Now I'm going to plug in the easiest test point, 0, 0, to make sure we shade it on the right side. So when substituting in 0, 0 for the inequality, I get a true statement, 0 is greater than negative 1. So that means the origin is in the shaded region, what, which it is. So that means we did the right thing. Now in part B, we have the inequality, y is less than or equal to 3x minus 1. This is also in slope-intercept slope form, so we can easily plot the slope and the y-intercept. So we have the y-intercept of negative 1 being plotted as well as using the slope to get the next point. This is actually the same slope and y-intercept as the previous problem. And then for the boundary line, this time it's going to be solid because we have the or equal to below. And then also this time we're going to be shading below because we have a less than or equal to. So that means the points below the line are solutions. For testing, we're going to plug in 0, 0 again and see if it works for the inequality. When plugging in 0, 0, I get a false statement of 0 is less than or equal to negative 1. So that means the origin is not in the shaded region. And as you can see, it is not. 
In example two, we have a real life application problem. It says, the map shows the number of tickets needed for small or large rides at the fair. You do not want to spend more than $15 on tickets. How many small or large rides can you ride? So you can see in the picture, the small rides require three tickets and the large rides require five tickets and the tickets are 25 cents each. So now what we wanna do is organize all of that and then define our variables and write an inequality. So here's how we're gonna set up our inequality. The number of tickets for small rides plus the number of tickets for large rides has to be less than or equal to the number of 25 cent tickets you can buy with $15. Defining our variables, I'm going to let x equal the number of small rides that we go on and y be the number of large rides that we go on. So following the format that I showed you above, I'm going to have the inequality 3x because each of the small rides requires three tickets, plus 5y, each of the large rides requires five tickets, is less than or equal to 60. And the 60 is coming from the $15 that you don't want to spend more than, and each of the tickets is 25 cents, so you can see right above, I did 15 divided by 25 cents, and that gives us 60. So that's the number of tickets that we can buy with $15. If you can recall from section 2.4, standard form makes it very easy for us to graph a line. And that's actually the form that our linear inequality is in. 3x plus 5y is less than or equal to 60. So we can easily find the x and y intercepts. And remember that in order to find the x intercept, you set y equal to 0. So I showed you the process right here. So when we set y equal to 0, you get x equals 20. So the x intercept is 20 comma 0. And a similar process for the y intercept, you want to set x equal to 0. And we find out that the y-intercept is 0, 12. So now what we're going to do is label the axes, title the graph, and plot the x and y-intercepts and connect. Because the symbol is a less than or equal to, we're going to have a solid boundary line. And also the y is on the left side of the inequality, and there's no negatives that we're dealing with, so that means we're going to be shading below. The region above the boundary line represents combinations of rides that require more than 60 tickets. So that's why we shaded below the boundary line. We purchased a finite number of tickets, 60 tickets in particular, so we won't be able to go on an infinite number of rides. The number of small rides x and the number of large ride rides y are whole numbers. In math, such a situation is called discrete. All points with whole number coordinates in the shaded region represent the possible combinations of small and large rides we can go on. So I showed that in the graph in the blue. And if you chose any combination in the shaded region in the blue that is not on the boundary line, you would not be spending all your money. But the three points on the boundary line, you would be spending all of your money. So far today, we have dealt with linear inequalities. Now, if you can recall from the previous lesson video, we talked about absolute value equations, and now we're going to kind of merge both of those topics and learn how to graph an absolute value inequality. The good news is that when we graph two variable absolute value inequalities, we can follow the same process that we took for graphing linear inequalities. So in example three, we have the equation one minus y is less than the absolute value of x plus two. The first thing that we want to do is isolate the y or get it by itself. And that was, is going to require two steps. After we subtract one from each side, we have the inequality negative y is less than the absolute value of x plus two minus one. Essentially, there's a negative one in front of that y. So the way that we want to isolate that is divide both sides by negative one. And remember, when you multiply or divide by a negative, the, a the inequality symbol needs to switch directions. When we divide both sides by negative one, we get the inequality y is greater than negative absolute value of x plus two plus one. So please notice that the negative sign just went in front of the absolute value. The signs in the middle of the absolute value in between, it's not changing. And then the negative one becomes a positive one. So now it's in a nice form and it'll be easy to graph from here. Okay, taking a look at the details of this absolute value inequality, you can see in front we have a negative one. So the leading coefficient a is equal to negative one, which means it's going to open down. For the vertex, we have negative two. Remember, the general equation of an absolute value has a minus sign inside, so that plus sign is essentially a double negative. So the h 
coordinate or the x coordinate of the vertex is negative 2 and the y coordinate is positive 1. So the vertex is negative 2, 1. And then for the boundary line, it's going to be a dashed line and we're going to shade above because we have a greater than symbol. So what I want to do now is plot the vertex at negative 2, 1. From there, I'm going to use the a value of negative 1, which means that we are going down 1 over 1 in both directions. Remember the A value is the one that determines if it's opening up or down as well as a vertical stretch or compression. From there we can keep plotting some points just going down one over one. And now I want to make a dashed boundary line with arrows at the end. And then we're going to shade above. And hopefully you remember the process that I talked about earlier for checking. We can use the easiest test point, which is the origin, 0, 0, to make sure we shaded in the right region. So when I substituted in 0, 0 for the original absolute value inequality, I got a true statement of 1 is less than 2. So that means the origin is in the shaded region, and as you can see in our graph, this is true. Remember how we talked about transformations in the 2.6 and 2.7 lesson videos? We can actually use this transformation knowledge to help us write an inequality when given a graph. And that's what we're going to do in this last example together. The first thing I'd like to do is determine what the value is of the A, or the leading coefficient of this absolute value inequality. The boundary line of this graph is a translation of the graph of the parent function y equals absolute value of x. I know this because it is the same shape as that of the parent function, and you can see right here in the black dashed lines, I have the parent function graphed. The slopes of the branches of the red dashed absolute value inequality graph are positive 1 and negative 1. You can see starting at the vertex, up 1 and 1 to the right, up 1 and 1 to the left, so the slopes are positive 1 and negative 1. Also, the V is opening up, so I know that the A is equal to positive 1. Now let's talk about the vertex. The vertex of the parent function is at the origin. The vertex of the red function is at the coordinate 3, negative 2. So that means what we did was we translated the original parent function 3 units right and 2 units down. So the new vertex is at the coordinate 3, negative 2. So that means the boundary is the graph of the equation y equals 1 times the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2. And the 1 in front is unnecessary to write, but I just wanted to put that there so you know that it's there. Uh, and then also the h value is positive 3, so remember it still looks like a negative because the minus is part of the formula. The red boundary line is dashed, so I know that the inequality symbol is either going to be greater than or less than. And the shading is above, so that means our inequality symbol is going to be greater than because the numbers that are bigger than the absolute value equation or inequality are the solutions. So we can just plug in the greater than symbol for the equation that we already found, and that will complete this problem. The inequality is y is greater than the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2. And I'm going to check to make sure we made the correct symbol for the shading. I use the test point of the origin again, 0, 0. When I plugged in or substitute in 0, 0 for the inequality, I got 0 is greater than 1, which is a false statement. And that proves that the origin is not in the shaded region. And you can see in the graph that the origin is in the white region. So we are good to go. Here's our lesson check for 2.8. Make sure you graph all four of these inequalities, and that's going to include boundary lines and also shaded regions. Please let me know if you have any questions the next time we see each other, and make sure you are starting to prepare for the Chapter 2 test.